and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the Valley of the Judged. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me as always I have my good brother here in the temple, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadare Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother Xanatrix. I really am the master of a thousand runes these days. Elden Ring is so much fun. It it is definitely a lot of fun, but I um, I'm having tr I'm having trouble adjust adjusting to having a jump button in a in a Souls like. Go play Sekiro again, then come back. You should be fine. <laughs> I'd like to say I'd like to say that, but there were plenty there were plenty of times when interacting with objects during the brief amount of time that I was playing, that I would um. That I would hit that I would hit X in I would hit um X instead of triangle. <laughs> I, I know some people might say, but you got it on PC, Monk. Why why are you bringing why are you bringing up the control setup for for our, for a PlayStation controller? I use DS4 because I because I'm too cheap to buy a Xbox One controller just for my PC. I use a DualShock 4 because I pre I prefer it ergonomically. Oh, there's that. There's that too. I mean, I, I mean, it could it could be worse. I could be using an N sixty four controller. Mm, deep cut, monk. Also, I don't think it actually work with these games. <laughs> there are people. There, there is a USB version of an N sixty four controller. I'm not entirely sure why you'd want why you would want one. Maybe for emulation. That's about it. Yeah. But, but like I remember I remember when I would play Doom sixty four EX and I would play that with mouse and keyboard. Ah That sounds like a wonderful time. The only reason I don't use Doom sixty four EX is that the um, Doom 64 remake that Night Dive did is superior in every way. Indeed. Least of which adding a few new levels. Oh. But it's interest. It's interesting that we bring up um that we bring up Souls Souls like games this week, given the given the fact that well, there's the. There's the old joke of I left, you left, the table left, we killed the table. It was a good time. <laughs> Cause let's talk mm. about mimics. Ah uh, yes. I ha whenever I whenever I have the option to, I always um I always end up hitting a treasure chest in uh, in a lot of action RPGs just in case. He's got mimic PTSD, people. Don't worry. <laughs> Can you blame me? No, but I've been hitting chests since, uh, man, what game was it? Had to be one of the older Metro Metroidvanias. Mm -hmm. Those had mimic chests as well. Yeah, you, it ha it happens to you enough, it happens to you enough times, um, in the words of Spider Jerusalem, a paranoid person is just someone in possession of all the facts. Yes. One of my favorite quotes of his. And of of course And I I am fully aware of the sweet irony in in complaining about how much I how much I hate mimic treasure chests when we, when um our own FF Legend project is 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 creating a mimic class. Well, that's because that's because that's that's because that is its own tr its own tradition going all the way back to I want to say five? Yeah, pretty sure five is where the mimic class started. Mm -hmm. And it's also a very good segue to go into the mimic class for um, Veil of the Void, which is not in that same vein, largely because it would be kind of hard to kind of hard to do, even though we're even though we're going to be doing it though in our own way. <laughs> in our own way. Um. But the but the con the concept of the mimic the 
the mime, the <laughs> doppelganger, what ha what have you. It's always it's always been present, but there isn't really a. This isn't an archetype. This isn't an archetype that has a whole lot of baggage like some of the other ones we've talked about. Last Indeed. week we talked about the necromancer, which was which um the idea of a necromancer as a as a character archetype has a fair amount of baggage. The field knight, while there while there isn't a whole lot of field knight like classes in other games, the idea of a t of a tank class is present, so we were able to go into that kind of thing. Um, this also means that this this also means that we are going another week without without comparing a class to a um, TF2 character. No, no, you're wrong. Spy. All right, gentlemen. Gentlemen, I see that you are here, and I have the intelligence. Good day. <laughs> Of course, the whole thing. What are you, president of his fan club? No, that would be your mother. <laughs> what? What are you, the president of his fan club? No, that would be your mother. She, of course, pisses off Scout. Indeed, and now he's come to fuck us. So listen up, <laughs> boy. Or pornography starring your mother will be the second thing that happened to you today. <laughs> Which, as a as a bit of an aside, um, I love I love the spy as a concept, at, but I think it's the one concept that Valve wasn't able to fully follow through on, because it works perfectly fine when you're doing those big ten v ten clusterfucks, but whenever you're doing something a little more specialized, it doesn't quite work. And when they tried to when they tried to do more competitive multiplayer, um, the spy crumbles because part of his whole gimmick is disgu is disguising himself. Yeah. Kind of hard, kind of hard to do that when everybody's na everybody's name and cl and class choice is easily visible. Yeah, that's that's an oversight on a on Valve's part there. I look at it as a, as a case of the of um kind of kind of justifying what a lot of people say about Two Fort that time has molded it into a Frankenstein that it was that it wasn't meant to be. I mean, you could say that about many different long running games. Just give me back my my innocent hat simulator with attached arena shooter. <laughs> Just with a crafting model that is less shitty. That too. Also, also one that um that, that doesn't tr that doesn't trigger my um my or my the organizational part of my brain when it comes to when it comes to multiple um I when it comes to item management mm. or even re even recipe management. It's I'm not OCD, but there are moments, and when you ha and when you just have a bunch of recipes just thrown out all over the place that are, and not even organized even alphabetically, let alone let alone by t let alone by type, I start get getting the twitching. I um, worst case scenario, I look I look at some I look at some of those lists and I go, so this is how Crony feels when the Minecraft server is disorganized. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <sighs> just having her walk about going, no, this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Mm -hmm. I remember. Convincing absolutely no one. <clears throat> but Copium. Copium images everywhere. <laughs> but... The way they describe the mimic is more of is more of a def more of a defensive or, or actually or um, more accurately a bit of a counter puncher, and that's a that's a bold strategy, largely because a lot of games that try and do that whole defensive leaning um, archetype 
they tend they tend to be sitting around and waiting for things to happen so they can utilize their stuff. Reactionaries. And as we saw as we saw which that kind of thing can also apply to tanks. And we already saw the response to that in this game when we looked at the Field Knight. And the Field Knight said, I'm a tank! I'm a tank your face into the ground! <laughs> uh, basically being, being the embodiment of the suck my dick, I'm a tank <laughs> um, gif. Suck my dick, I'm a tank! Mm-hmm. This is it, it is the one type of tank where a commissar could say, Drive me closer, I want to hit them with my sword, and the tank would say, Sir, we're already there. <laughs> <laughs> but commissar would be like, Good men. But it opens up with Whereas most classes can perform many offensive strikes, mimics prefer the defensive route. They wait for their adversaries to make the first move, then strike, using the enemy's power against them with the realm of reflections power. Like the realm they channel, they are masters of distortion and echo. 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 Every attack launched in their direction has a chance of backfiring on the one who performed it. Yes. Yes! Let's see, so they are proficient in archaic weapons, no armor, and reflection shards. There's a reason for the no armor thing, and we'll get there. Let's see. When you, and you level up, add 1d6 plus 1d3 plus, vi, plus vitality, or 5 plus vitality to max HP. Yep. And you start with any archaic weapon, 46 times 1,000 system credits, 10 reflection shards, and 1 bonus level in balance and dodge. I wonder why you'd need those. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine why. So, you also you also start with with uh, well we'll get we'll get to that. So first off, we have our level one abilities, and the first one you get, which is an exclusive one, is masterful mimicry. I love alliteration. The mimics have mimicry points or MP to spend on the abilities below. They start with five points and gain five more at every five levels. So would you say that? This is a that this entire um, skill is a menagerie of masterful mimicry. <laughs> oh, I'd also say that three ain't enough. They need five. <laughs> five, three, sir, three. Mm -hmm. Oh, you recover half of your expended MP during a short rest and all of it during a long rest. Wow, they're the only one to have MP. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have se we have several we, um things. Seven of them, can, I think, total. Yeah, se seven that you can use. I was hoping we'd. Ha I was hoping it would be five just to keep on with the gag, but no, no, no. You see, monk, it's seven because that's how many years bad luck you get for breaking mirrors, <laughs> and they do everything from the realm of reflection. There so there's seven ways they can give people bad luck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, physical misdirection. If an adversary hits you with a non-magical attack, you may spend your reaction to copy that attack back at them. The reflected attack inflicts the same damage that you sustained before deductions and up to four times judgment in max damage. I'd like to note that this seems to be the only ability in Masterful Mimicry that does not have an MP cost. Mm -hmm. But it does have a reaction cost. Let's see, of next course. is Mental Distortion. If an adversary casts a spell against you and it fails, you may spend 2 MP and your reaction to open a rift to the Realm of Reflection between you and the caster. The spell instead launches at the caster, performed a contested judgment check to hit the target. You failed to cast your magic. I'll cast it for you. Here. Let's see. Illusionary steps. You may spend your reaction on another ally's turn 
to move five squares closer or five squares further away from their target. If you are adjacent to an adversary, they may perform a RS against you. However, it will be one difficulty higher. Okay, I stand corrected. There are two abilities that don't have MP costs. Mm -hmm. Let's see, next is Mimic Strike. When another ally attacks a target, you may sacrifice your reaction and one MP to attack their target. In, me in melee, you make attacks that use the ally's weakest weapon. At range, you use their weakest ranged weapon, if they have one. The attack uses judgment and can copy attack-based spells. <laughs> Mechromancer casts one of their attack spells. I'll copy you, buddy! That's, that's pretty nice. Uh, next <laughs> is Deja Vu. I've been here in this place before. <laughs> you may sacrifice an extra action and 3 MP to prepare. While prepared, you gain an additional reaction at the start of your next turn in the next round. While Until the start of your next turn in, in the next round. Until, yeah, for some, reason I did, for some reason that skimmed past me. While prepared, you may interrupt an adversary's turn and then perform your turn. After you finish your turn, if the adversary can, they will continue their turn. That's a great way to perform an interrupt. Mm -hmm. Especially if you can get some sort of, like, knockdown or or ability off that stops them in their tracks from doing something big. Mm -hmm. Let's see, next is Arcane Mockery. You may copy an instant cast spell used in the previous round or turn. Spend 3 MP and your action to cast the spell automatically. Nice. And Refracted Mirage. You may spend 3 MP and your reaction when, you suc when successfully hit by an attack, ranged or melee, to instantly reduce the effects of the attack by half. You may teleport up to 5 squares away or towards the adversary that hit you and perform an attack against them. That can also be pretty useful. Mm -hmm. And then we get to the second skill at level 1, the reason you don't have armor proficiency. Another unique, Fool's Paradise. You cannot wear armor. The Realm of Reflection distorts and absorbs many hits. While not wearing armor, excluding species traits... You are equipped with medium 3 armor and reduce incoming damage by your judgment virtue, minimum of 1 damage. Gain resistance to reflected reflection damage. At level 10, you can switch your armor between medium 3 and heavy 4 as a rearm action. At level 15, reduce damage by 2 times judgment. Told you there's a reason you can't wear armor. Yeah. Because you put mirrors around yourself. It's essentially the it's essentially a better version of the unarmed um the unarmored bonuses that classes like monks and barbarians can get. This is way better because it just straight up says because of your magic, you have the equivalent to medium armor. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you get to reduce dam any incoming damage by your judgment. see so at level two in addition to an extra skill point you gain false proficiency studying others you gain proficiency in two tools or one weapon of your choice you gain one additional proficiency at levels 8 12 and 20 after a short rest you may add a plus one bonus level to three skills with two or less sp invested in it this bonus stays until your next short rest so, not only do we have the copycat, but we've got a little bit of Skill Thief. And this is a non-unique. Mm -hmm. Other people could take this if they wanted. Although, given some of the, given some of the counter-attack abilities we saw before, imagine using this to, sti to um, copy a rocket launcher. <laughs> I'm going to take proficiency in ranged weapons... Rocket launcher. Uh, are you sure? Yes. Let's see. At level 3, you gain misimpressions. Once per short rest on a failed contested check, 
you may re-roll that check, gain plus one bonus level in the Speechcraft skill. And you also gain Shards of Myth. During a short rest, you may roll 1d6 and craft that many Reflection Shards. During a long rest, you may, cra you may roll 2d6. And both of these are not unique. Mm-hmm. Which means your architect could, could get it to sh yeah. craft shards. Yep. At 4th level, you gain advancement training. At 5th level, you gain your first you gain your first specialization benefit. Um, the three specializations we have are Chrono Dreamer, Delusionist, and Imitator. Um, at level 6, you gain Optical Illusion, which is also a non-exclusive. Point to a square that you can see within 10 squares of you. An illusion that looks exactly like you spawns in that square. The illusion cannot talk and may only perform basic actions such as running, walking, waving, etc. If it is attacked or runs into something, it will vanish. It lasts for 2 minutes and has a 2 minute cooldown. Um, okay. Here's a decoy. Bye! At level 7, you gain Advancement Training. At level 8, you gain Shattered Counter, our first exclusive in a while. You may perform a Contested Judgment check when performing your Physical Misdirection ability. If you succeed, your attack splits and targets two additional adversaries within eight squares of your attacker. I get hit by one guy and hit three people! <laughs> See, at, le at level 9 is Fractured Mind, which is a non-exclusive. You gain immunity to mind-controlling effects, such as Confusion. At level 10, you gain your second benefit from Specialization. At level 11, you gain Advancement Training and Master Reactor. You gain an additional reaction with which to perform Mimicry Reactions. I have the strangest case of Dijon Mustard, Monk. <laughs> Additional reactions with which to do your class stuff? Mm -hmm. What does this remind me of? <laughs> At level 12, you gain Reflective Stance. Enemy adversaries that attack you do so with an auto-miss die. If they roll a critical fail, they take twice your judgment in Reflection Damage. I think, therefore, I am. It, it, you take your 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 reflective stance is you posing as the thinker. <laughs> That's reflective enough, right? Mm -hmm. And you gain imaginary strike. You gain additional attack action. Nice. Which is a that one is a is an exclusive. Mm -hmm. At level thirteen, you gain em empathetic echo. You may use a reaction and 3 MP whenever an ally takes damage to absorb half the damage inflicted. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Does that... Does that synergize? If you take that damage, do you also get to possibly use one of your mimicry skills? I want to know if that's... I could I don't think I could go either way with that, but it could get a little bit ridiculous. I don't think it does because I think they have to be hitting you. Mm -hmm. However, um you could absorb that damage and then immediately use mimic strike because that is when an uh, uh, or or uh, not a mimic strike um illusionary steps or something along those lines, moving closer to their target whatever. Or whatever's near them. Mm -hmm. There's there's some synergy yeah. there. I'm thinking. I'm 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 tinkering in my brain. Mm -hmm. At fourteenth level, you gain advancement training once again. At fifteenth level, you gain specialization once again. Once again. At sixteenth level, you gain inner reflection. You now regain all expended MP during a short rest. This one's obviously an exclusive for mm -hmm. very obvious reasons. Yep. 
At level 17, you gain advancement training. At level 18, you gain copycat, which is not an exclusive. Once every four rounds or once, e or once every minute. When a skill check fails against you, you may use it against the being that attempted, to, that attempted it against you. Just another way of saying, if someone tried to use a skill check against you and failed, you get to use the same skill check against them. At, le at level 19, you gain Imitated Expertise. Every short rest, add plus two bonus levels to a skill that another ally has at least one level in. This bonus stays until your next short rest. Again, that's not... that one's not exclusive. Mm -hmm. And at, le at level 20, you gain, your fi you gain your final benefit from specialization. And... Pantomimic, your ultimate. You gain a permanent plus one to either your judgment or finesse, which can bring you above nine. You may choose two abilities, including unique ones, from the level three to 19 of another class. It cannot be the advancement, specialization, or spell upgrade abilities. Unique ones? <laughs> including. Unique? Hold on! Hold on! <laughs> Hold on! Hold on! From between 3 and 19, unique ones mm. that are not specialization, spell upgrade, or advancement training. Um, uh, um, where's a good one? You could learn Call of the Grave from the Necromancer. A unique, as the adversary gets closer to entering the realm of death, your strikes grow more vicious. Once an adversary is below half health, you critically succeed with one less hit. You may only crit this way on the same adversary once every round. That's... That's a what? <laughs> I love it! I fucking love it! And then we get to the subclasses. The first one is Chrono Dreamer. A unique specialization. Mm -hmm. The Realm of Reflection distorts and reflects all other realms. The Chrono Dreamer has learned to use this ability to their benefit, focusing on the distortion and manipulation of time. From rewinding time to jumping forward, they handle time like no other can. <sighs> so, at 5th level, they gain False Time. Chrono Dreamers gain unique new mimicry abilities. These abilities use your mimicry points. Upon choosing this path, you immediately receive an additional 5 max MP. So, is that an additional 5 max MP on top of the 5 max MP you're already getting from just reaching level 5? I think so, and given the fact that you're getting... It, that By that point, you'd have a total of 10 uh, mimicry abilities, it's understandable. Yeah, because they get three new Mimicry abilities. Mm -hmm. The first one is Illus Illusionary Leap. Time reflects in such a way that your target seems to fast forward. You may spend four MP and a reaction to warp the time around an adversary. In doing so, you force them to skip an action or attack, and they lose one reaction. If they have multiple actions in the action phase, they may still perform them, provided they can. <laughs> you're gonna attack me no you're not i'm sorry what was that you had an attack no 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 you don't it's gone now bye we all hated it we all hated it playing um playing board games like sorry or monopoly whenever somebody used utilized a um a skip a skip a turn move or we all hated it when you do it with a blue control deck and magic oh um. I'm just going to take three turns now. Bye. You want to know one one of my favorite maneuvers with my, with my uh, with both of my primary decks when I was still playing Yu-Gi-Oh were? Oh god, what? I lo I loved a whenever somebody would whenever somebody would break out their ace car their ace card and, and that ha that had all the attack points, I would just flip over trap hole. 
Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this <sighs> got even worse with my Gravekeeper deck, because remember, Necro Valley. Yep. What goes in doesn't come out. Except for me. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's very true. So they spent all that time getting all that stuff set up, and it's gone. <laughs> oh. Any anyway, next is Rewind. You may spend 5 MP and your reaction to bend the time around another ally. You may fully rewind an ally's turn, le leaving to a time mirage of their previous turn. Your ally may then move their full movement once more and perform another action. After they perform their movement and action, time returns to normal, and the mirage performs its action and disappears. An ally may not cross paths with their mirage, or they will create a paradox and take 15 reflection and force damage. Why does this sound like that arena shooter that that was a puzzle game that we saw? I can definitely see that. I could also say, um, don't cross the streams. Eh. But we have to cross the streams. Mm -hmm. And the, thir the third one is Illusion of Time. In the realm of reflection, time is an illusion. Oh, why, didn't, why didn't anybody tell Buddha Bubba? You may use 8 MP during a short rest to distort time. Everyone in the party, including yourself, treats it as though it has been a long rest of 8 hours. This effect fully recharges your MP, excluding the 8 you spent to cast it. You cannot use this effect again until after your next long rest. Okay, that's a, that seems like it could be pretty useful in a, squ in a pinch. Unfortunately, I get the feeling that some people might pick Chrono Trigger just so that they can be Dio. Chrono Dreamer. Dreamer. Dreamer, mm. sorry. Which is still... That's a very suspicious name, but a radical one, too. <laughs> As an aside, when, when the... When, um... The remastered Chrono Cross comes out. I do think we're going to need to dedicate an episode of Geek Watch to that. Probably. Um, at tenth level, the Chrono Dreamer gets shards of remembrance. Your future self leaves behind memory <laughs> fragments for you to find. Twice per short rest, you may spend one mimicry point to discover a shard of remembrance. This shard reveals something small but helpful about the future not necessarily the near future. The GM decides what this small tidbit will be. You may use this during a skill or combat test, sacrificing your reaction and 2 MP to either reroll a test, including ones, or add pips to a third die. So... It's soapstone messages, Monk. Mm-hmm. Just to yourself, from a different timeline. <laughs> at level 15 you gain time anomaly you cause a time paradox as you launch an attack granting you an additional attack action which if I'm not mistaken you should have three by that point <laughs> yes three attacks and so if you take chrono dreamer you get three attacks that's nice mm -hmm. at level 20 you gain chronological shift once per long rest as an action, you may shift the current initiative order. You may swap your place with an adversary or willing PC other than the first in the initiative order. You may then swap one willing ally's current initiative order and another willing ally's initiative order. Adversaries cannot be swapped if they are premium level. Initiative fuckery. It's nice. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a pretty that's that's a pretty good capstone. That type of initiative fuckery can be real nice. Oh yes. So sec our second subclass for the for the mimic is the imitator. Another exclusive. Uh -huh. 
Imitators use peculiar masks imbued by the mar with the marks of other classes. These mimics copy these classes effortly effortlessly switching between abilities and blurring the lines between classes. So Majora's Mask, is that you? <laughs> Do I, have to, do I have to sing a song of healing around allies to get their masks of, uh, of class abilities? We've been, we've been met with a terrible fate, haven't we? Indeed. So, first is the masks of replication. As an action, you may, place a, you may place a mask on that imitates another class of choice. You gain their active class abilities. This lasts five minutes. After the duration ends, it counts as one activation. You may revert to your basic form at any time, but this will cancel your mask ability and count as one activation. You may switch between classes during the duration without canceling the ability. This may be activated twice per day. <laughs> you also gain replicative weapons. You transform your weapons into illusionary copies. The copies can be anything needed to perform actions of your imitated class. These inflict the same damage your base weapon inflicts and uses your primary virtue to attack. So, you know, the idea of that um, of that mimic necromancer is is sounding a bit more appealing now, isn't it? A lot more appealing. <sighs> I uh, I like the idea of putting on a mask, transforming my weapon into something else to be more effective as a class I've just picked. Mm -hmm. That's fun. So at level ten, at level ten, we ha we start off with voice imitation. Twice per short rest, you may imitate another voice perfectly for ten minutes. You also gain Fake Reflection. Once per short rest, you may make an item appear exactly as another item. This effect lasts until your next short rest. This is where you're going to talk about the whole selling this to somebody to get money, only for it to fade away later and or you summon it to yourself thing again, isn't it? Um, no, th no, in this case, this is, wh this is where you... This is where you um, this is where you create. This is where you create fake gold and se and sell it, and then skip town. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or use it for the old switch for the old switcheroo gag we've seen that we've seen, we've seen Lupin and company do many times when it comes to items being on auctions. That or, you know, everything else we've seen with Lupin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So many switcheroos, so many gags. Sometimes the switcheroo gets switcherooed because Fujiko has to be Fujiko. Lupin, stop staring at tits. <laughs> Focus on the treasure. Level At level 15, you gain Jack of All Trades. Treat all skills that do not have a skill point in them as having two skill points. Your mask's duration is now 10 minutes. Even better. And at 20th level, you gain Reflective Implementation. You may choose a specialization ability of any other specialization. I'm, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Wraith Lord, buddy, pal, come here. <laughs> I want your personal Wraith. Let's do this. <laughs> The question that I have to ask is, does it have to be 20th level, or can it just be any? I think at, I think at this point, if you're doing this at 20th level, I think it's supposed to be leaning to any. You can do any, but why would you do any when you can pull a powerful 20th level specialization? I'm just going to pull a power 20th, powerful 20th level specialization that fits this situation perfectly. You know, and I'm I'm also curious if that how that if it's a, if um if you're able to switch 
especially given how the way massive replication work um it does it doesn't outright say that that you're stuck with that um you're stuck with that particular mask no the mask says that you can switch classes mm -hmm. it's the same mask but the mask imitates whatever class that you need it to imitate yeah then we have the delusionist the only non-exclusive uh specialization mm -hmm. Delusionists learn to control the distorted arcane from the realm of reflection. They bend reality around them. By the time adversaries think they know the real one, the original one stabs them in the back. So it's our caster. Mm -hmm. So the first thing they get is our canting. Delusionist's primary arcane casting virtue is judgment. Gain plus one in the arcanting skill, and you may cast spells at apprentice level. Your primary spell tree is Reflection. You gain eight spells. That's nice. Mm -hmm. You also gain Mirrored Cast. Once per short rest, when you cast a Reflection spell while your illusions are in play, you may shatter the illusion to cast a known Reflection spell for free. Now, the Arcanting and the Mirrored Cast are both... Uh exclusive specialization skills but the specialization overall is not exclusive mm -hmm. you also gain master illusionist while you have illusions in play you may swap freely among them once every three rounds causing adversaries to lose track of you you may spend an extra action to shatter your illusions if you do they move up to three squares and detonate in a three by three area field Dealing 1, 2, 3, or 4 d6 plus judgment in reflective damage. After they explode, they leave behind a remnant that remains until it's either swapped to or combat ends. You may summon an illusion as an action once every three rounds. <laughs> and then illusions. Illusions have half the max HP and inflict half damage. They have one action to use and cannot use abilities. They last four rounds, and you may have four illusions under your control at one time. Mm -hmm. So now we know why this is called the Delusionist. Yeah, this is going to be our gotcha build. Gotcha, bitch! Mm -hmm. At, lev at level 10, you first gain Illusionary Steps, gain a permanent plus 3 squares of base movement, and 3 times the jump height. As an extra action, you may spawn Mirrored Shards beneath your feet. This allows you to walk through the air, last 5 minutes. Why am I reminded of the way Double Jump works in a lot of Devil May Cry games? Because uh, Air Hike puts a magical crest beneath their feet when they perform the second jump. Mm -hmm. And you also gain Reflective Gate. After channeling for four rounds, you may open a portal into the Reflection Realm. This portal lasts up to two hours. All who enter are protected from the realm's harsh effects while it remains. You may move the you may move the portal while within the reflection realm. If you, if you or any who enter do not leave within two hours, they lose their protection and the portal closes. 30 minute cooldown. We haven't gone over the, uh, the hazards of each realm, and that'll be far later down the road, but that sounds like a real terrible fate there. Lock your enemies inside. You also gain spell upgrade. You may now cast your spells at a depth level and gain two additional spells. So at this point, you have ten additional spells and can cast adept. Mm -hmm. Nice. At fifteenth level, you gain false display. Once per day, you may create an individual illusion of all allied PCs on the battlefield. These illusions are controlled by each individual PC on their turns. These illusions are affected by master illusionist ability, but do not count towards the max illusions you can control. These illusions last for three rounds or until killed slash dismissed. Hmm. Then, of course, 
You, you also get spell upgrade. Yep, you can cast spells at Magus level and gain an additional spell. Yep. So at, at the last spell upgrade, you have 11 spells total at Magus. Mm -hmm. at, and at 20th level, you gain Foil of Reflection. You activate energy sh Your active energy shields reflect damage back to the beings that attack you. You may deal twice your judgment in reflection damage to those that successfully hit you while you have energy shields active. You may break your shields as an action t on your turn and launch illusionary daggers out from you in a 7x7 seven seven area field. These damage inflict 15 plus judgment in piercing and reflection damage to all beings in range. Okay, Virgil. <laughs> it's it's summoned it's the circle of summoned swords that eventually shoot out from him. Mm -hmm. It's at least it's not judgment cut or judgment cut end. That would be scarier. No. Lay all. <laughs> no, we'll pro though I w though if we get if we end up getting something like that later, I called it. Oh, I called it. I'm the one who mentioned it first. Monk. <laughs> we called it. There. Fine. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, share my glory with you. <laughs> I remember you at, I remember you asking why um, ref, why mimics wouldn't be able to get um, why the superlatives. Spells, yeah, superlative spells. And I think we know why, because the only way to even get those spells is to take one subclass. Yeah. Still kind of, you know, disappointing. Or if I'm imitating Kevin Sorbo, since this is all about mimicry, disappointed. <laughs> anyway, next we have the reflection realm spells. The first one is novice, so we have conceal oneself, which lasts for an hour and has a one-hour cooldown. Disguise yourself as someone else. You can seem two feet shorter or taller, and may add up to two additional arms or two less arms. You can appear thin, large, or somewhere in between. Um, the additional arms is because you to to appear like a, a Corian, mm -hmm. a dwarf. Um, and um, I get the feeling if if I was if I was running a mimic and spoiler was at, was at the table, I'd probably use this as a. I'm going to use conceal myself to be a taller version of spoilers character. That's uh. That's that right there, Monk, is enough for you to have earned the uh, the Mojo Jojo and him meme image of that's so evil. I love it. <laughs> uh, next is Confusion Ray, aka. Wait a minute. When did this Zubat? I was about to say, when did this become a Pokemon game? <laughs> See. I, I'd also I'd also like to note that conceal oneself and confusion ray are non-exclusive spells, meaning other spellcasting classes can't take these. Mm -hmm. You launch a ray of twisting reflection energy towards an adversary. Duration channel one, three ra three rounds, cooldown two rounds, range eight squares. It's an arcanting attack. Upon a successful cast, a beam shoots forward and deals an instant one, two, three, or five d six reflection damage. It applies the confusion status for two rounds. On your subsequent turns, if you are maintaining the channel, the spell automatically inflicts 1, 2, 3, or 4d6 piercing damage. I'm just going to keep hitting you. Yes, specifically you. I hate you. You're going to die. Um, I want to I take this time to point out that with this, we have an example of the, of the channeling rule that is... Not shit. Because remember, that was our that was one of the big that was one of the big burrs up our ass when it came to, um, when it came to spell casting in the in the alleged world's greatest role playing game. Yeah, this this is this is concentration, except not shit. You're right. Mm -hmm. This is. Channeling, first you have to channel to even cast a spell, so you do have to sacrifice time. Mm -hmm. But then you can just keep channeling, pay, continuing to pay some sort of upkeep cost. Likely you're also going to be gathering more and more realm charge energy as you do this. Especially since it's a difficulty of our, of our canting attack and it does have a cooldown. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but you're just going to keep doing damage. Yeah. So the next spell we have, another non-exclusive reflection uh, tree spell, Daydream. Uh, easy difficulty two, um, range of nine squares, instant, last two rounds, cooldown two rounds. Upon a successful cast, choose one, two, three, four targets. They must perform a contested arcanting check. If they fail, the targets drift into a daydream. They will not attack or perform any actions. They remain in this state for two rounds until until the spell is canceled or they are attacked. This essentially just makes you stop, makes makes you get CC. This is all about the CC, boys. Mm -hmm. Next we have False Companion. And it is, if you'll forgive me for using it, for using an old Nanoha meme, you're going to get befriended. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Contested or canting judgment difficulty, range five squares, instant duration, la Five minutes, cooldown, five minutes. Befriend a targeted enemy. They will act accordingly and help you willingly. If used in combat, the target willingly fights for you. If they are attacked by you or an ally, the spell will end. The spell lasts five minutes or until interrupted. If the spell ends naturally, they will not recall helping you. So use this on the biggest motherfucker in a group of enemies. Have him beat up his friends for you. Tell him... Good job, buddy, and walk away. <laughs> when the spell wears off, all his buddies will be dead, and he'll have no idea why. Mm -hmm. Let's see, then, hallucination. Because cocaine is a hell of a drug. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. Let's see, average three difficulty, range nine squares, duration instant, <laughs> cooldown three rounds. Force the target to hallucinate. Summoning an illusion of an average creature you know. This illusion inflicts fear on the target. The movement from the fear condition will proc reactions. Does not affect targets immune to the fear condition and undead units. At adept level, you may summon a strong creature. Don't you start at adept level with the the delusionist? Wasn't wasn't it? You, you, let me let me check. Let me... Um. No, you yeah, started at, apprentice. No, you started apprentice. Okay, yeah. But at a depth level, you can summon strong creature. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um That sounds like a lot of fun. I'm gonna summon this illusion you and you're gonna run away from it. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> incurring reactionary strikes from all my buddies who have lined up with baseball bats behind you. <laughs> also known as the way to get your paper accepted in peer review. <laughs> I just call it the World Series of Pain. Mm -hmm. Next is Ill Illusionary Dance. And as an aside, the World Series of Pain is just is just a week of being a Mets fan. <laughs> so you're saying that Mets fans are always affected by a hallucination, Monk? Yeah. Believing that their team's going to do something this year. Every it's year. not all about the Mets, Arwen. <sighs> Next we have Illusionary Dance. Upon, let's see, average three difficulty, range ten squares, duration instant, four rounds, cooldowns three rounds. Upon a successful cast, one, two, three, or four illusions spawn equidistant from your target at your current range, if in melee, they spawn on all sides of the adversary target. The illusions may attack the target instantly. We can dance if we want to. <laughs> and we will leave your friends behind. Because your friends don't dance. And if they don't dance, we see they're no friends of mine. And I will leave their body on the floor. Oh, wait, that's a different song. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. Next is Mind Drain. Also, this is a spell exclusive to the Delusionist. Mm -hmm. It's an arcanting attack at range of 10 squares, instant duration, 4 round cooldown. Cast the spell and choose a target. That target takes 10 
20, 30, or 40 reflection damage. The target must perform a hard 4 mentality check. On a failure, you learn, fa you learn facts that they may be storing in their mind. This, can, this could be the, a location of treasure, a boss's plan, or anything the GM decides. At adept level and above, the target no longer performs a check and you automatically learn these facts. These may affect the same target twice per day. <laughs> that's, um... That's certainly nice. It's essentially, it's essentially mind crush. And, uh, and actually, let me make this even worse for you. You know what it is? What's that? Men talk the mind taker. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> I said it was going to make uh, it worse. Yes, I can still tell you to fuck off. <laughs> See, Isn't that what you always say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next we have Paramnesia. It's a hard forge um, difficulty. Range of nine squares. Duration instant, three rounds. Cool cooldown is three rounds. Choose one, two, three, or four units. Those units cannot discern between reality and fantasy. Oh, so just like Twitter. They attack whoever is closest, whether ally or enemy. They deal an additional 1, 2, 3, 4, D6 damage on their attacks. It's a Berserk spell. Not only a Berserk... It's not just a Berserk spell, Monk. It's actually Mass Confuse. <laughs> Let's see, next is Phantasm Weapon. I want to make that look like the weapon... The, the um, ball from Phantasm. Heh! <laughs> Average 3 difficulty, range of 8 squares, duration instant 5 rounds, cooldown 3 rounds. Summon 1, 1, 2, or 3 weapons of your choice on the battlefield into a square within range. Th that weapon moves and makes attacks on your turn. It can take on any weapon's appearance. Each weapon lasts 5 rounds. You may not have more than the allotted weapons at, any, at, a, at one time. They cannot be targeted and are indestructible. Each weapon inflicts 1, 2, 3, or 4 d6 reflection damage on hit and uses your arcanting or weapons mastery to attack. Ranged weapons have a range of 15 squares. Oh. Okay. I'm going to turn it into a firing squad, Monk. Yep. Um, there's, there's literally no reason to turn these into melee weapons unless you're already that close. Or in the, um, here's your um, here's your sum, here's your summon swords, just mm -hmm. standard sum, just standard summon swords. Um, you could no also monk, I, I summon Glock. <laughs> or you or at higher tiers, you could use this to be Doc Glock. Although personally, I, personally, I could see you using this to summon three rocket launchers. No, monk, you should know me better than that. I'd summon three Barrett M eighty two A ones. <laughs> using using a uh, um a pit rounds mm -hmm. for ah. shits and giggles. Mm -hmm. So then we get to the apprentice tier. The first is counter spell. <laughs> I, I told that. you this was a blue deck. <laughs> Because unfortunately, your spell was terrible. Contested or canting <laughs> difficulty, ranges 9, 10, or 15 squares. Duration is a reaction, cooldown 4 rounds. Cast the spell as a reaction. If you succeed, you cancel a successfully casted spell of your current spell level or lower. This spell may be cast to automatically cancel an out-of-control spell of equal level. Example, if you are level 10, you can cancel adept or lower spells. So counterspell can stop those out of control spell nasties, except for superlatives, because again, it, you, you can't stop superlative spell nasties mm -hmm. that, that are a twenty-five by twenty-five area dealing fifty chaotic damage around. Mm -hmm. Let's see, next is refraction field. Another exclusive to the delusionist. Mm -hmm. 
Hard for difficulty, range is 10 squares with an area of either 3x3, three 5x5, three, five five, or 7x7. Seven seven. Duration is channel 2 for 3 rounds. Cooldown is also 3 rounds. Place a small tear in the realm of reflection within range. Any adversaries within this within the field of this tear when first placed take 4, 5, or 66 plus judgment in damage. If any adversary starts or ends their turn in the field, they must perform a contested or canting check or take the damage stated above. Adversaries that move through the field do so at minus 2 speed. Jesus. So, a worse version of Cloud Kill. I mean, is it really worse? It scales, Monk. Unlike Cloud Kill. Mm -hmm. um, Sela's Perplexing Paralysis. Which is a hard four difficulty spell. Range of ten squares. Duration is instant. Two rounds. Cooldown is five rounds. Upon successfully cast, inflict the stun condition for two rounds. During the stun's duration, three mine shards are tossed in a random direction. These mine shards can be picked up by allies. As an extra action, these shards can be broken, inflicting 3, 4, or 5d6 five D, five D plus 5 pure damage to the target. Mmm, tasty! Pure damage because you're crushing their mind, literally. Mm -hmm. And it's also very surprising that this is a non-exclusive spell! Probably because in order to make the most out of it, it requires a good amount of coordination. Yeah. It's actually easier to count the exclusive spells than the non-exclusives. There's only three in the entire list that are exclusive. Yeah. Next is Truth Sight. While this spell is active, your passive observation is raised to hard, hard 4, hard 4, tough 5. You cannot be ambushed and always partake in surprise rounds. You gain an auto-hit die on insight checks. You are always able to tell the difference between real and illusion. This effect lasts for one hour. Okay. Yeah. Difficulty average three, range is self, duration instant one hour, and cooldown 15 minutes. Yep. Then we get to the adept spells. First is conditional feedback. Difficulty average, range 10 squares, duration instant, three to four rounds, cooldown is six rounds. You place a Rune of Reflection on yourself or an allied target within 10 squares range. This rune lasts 3 to 4 rounds and once per round will reflect any incoming conditions back to the target that inflicted them. If a condition is reflected this way, it deals 5 or 6d6 reflective damage to the target. Very nice. Let's see, next we have Feedback Orbs. The, the final delusionist exclusive. Mm -hmm. the, reflection the reflection realm enjoys using one's own power against them. Ain't that the truth? So this is a hard four casting. Range ten squares. Duration instant four rounds. Cooldowns three rounds. Summon two or three orbs of reflective energy around you. After you are hit by an adversary's spell or attack, the orb launches at your attacker. The orb inflicts 15 or 20 force damage. The orb then jumps to another adversary within range, inflicting 50, 15 or 20 force damage. After this jump, it may leap to an additional adversary or ally. If it moves to an ally, on their next attack, they gain an auto-hit die. So it jumps to two different enemies, at the very least, mm -hmm. and then can jump to a third enemy or an ally for funsies. And that's just on being hit, and you have two or three of them, depending on if you cast this as Adept or Magus. Mm -hmm. um, Magus, excuse me. Uh, this is this is fun. Just follow the bouncing ball. Uh, remember the bouncing ball for Men in Black? That's... yes. But anyway, next is Illusionary Dash, which is a Arcanting attack. You dash at, 
It range of 12 squares, duration instant, cooldown 3 rounds. You dash at a target within the spell's range and attack them upon arriving. This inflicts 2 or 4 times weapon damage in piercing damage. You may then stay where you are or teleport to where you started. Either way, you summon an illusion in either the starting or ending position for 3 rounds. This just makes me want to sing... Dash, dash, dun, dun, da, dun, dash, dash, dun, dun, da, dun, <laughs> dash, dash, dun, dun, da, dun, scoot around, do, do, dash, you. <laughs> ah, great Mazinger. Mm -hmm. oh. Let's see, and the, the last adept spell is Shattered Storm. Difficulty hard 4, ranges 12 squares with a area of either 5x5 five five or 7x7. Seven seven. Duration is channeled 2 um, four, over 4 rounds. Cooldown is 3 rounds. All adversaries in the area field take 6 or 8d6 reflection and chaotic damage. Any adversary that starts or ends their turn inside the field takes 3 or 4d6 reflection and chaotic damage. After an adversary is hit, roll 1d3 and consult the list below. 1. Burning. 2. Confusion. 3. Poison. Okay, this is the worst version of, of Cloud Kill. <laughs> <laughs> and it only affects adversaries, Monk. No friendly fire. Mm -hmm. Then we get to the Magus spells. I'm, I'm going to read these, Monk, because yeah. th while they're not superlatives, holy fuck. <laughs> so we start with Greater Reflection. Yep. Challenging six, but no difficulty on willing allies. Range ten squares. Hmm. Channel A duration of channel two and uh, five minutes with a cooldown of one minute. You summon an eerie purple reflection of a target. This reflection is controlled by you and has the target's stats, skills, attacks, and virtues. It inflicts full damage, but has 50 max HP and cannot be healed. So it's a better illusion. Mm -hmm. Actually, would you say that this is a better version of Phantasmal Killer? <laughs> or yes. even worse, a Purple Haze? You could even say it's deep purple, Monk. If it's coming from the sky, is it a purple rain? <laughs> if, if anybody thinks uh, that I'm abusing that joke, I live in Minnesota. I had to. <laughs> oh. Then we have Shatter Reality. Difficulty challenging six. Range two kilometers by two kilometers. Duration instant and lasts 20 minutes. And the cooldown is two hours. The Realm of Reflection rapidly pours into your reality. No, this is Purple Rain, Monk. <laughs> you and two others are not affected by this. You, you only get to choose two others. If you have a party of more than three people, this is going to fuck over part of your party. This is where you tell everybody else to get out to get out of sight. Get in the vehicle and get the fuck out of Dodge. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you and two others are not affected by this ability. All others perform a contested arcanting slash environmental survival check. On a failure, they lose all sense of direction and are lost within the realm's effects, unable to leave. As the realm closes, every being that failed must perform another contested check. On a failure, they roll 1d2. On a 1, they are stuck in the realm of reflection. On a 2, they return to the original realm. So, you open up a fucking reality maze that people can't escape. And after 20 minutes, if they're lucky, they're just left in their own world. If they're unlucky, they're taken to the realm of reflection. With all the hazards that apply. Not to mention that since they're all confused and have no sense of direction and are lost, it's really easy to ambush people in this in this type of situation. Mm -hmm. 
Let's see. And lastly, we have Swamp Mines. Difficulty tough five or no difficulty if used on a willing ally. Range of 10 squares. Duration instant lasts 15 minutes. Cooldown of 20 minutes. Choose an adversary or willing ally within range and swap your mind with theirs. You gain full control of the individual for the time. You can impersonate their voice, gait, and general actions. However, you do not know their specific movements and actions. Due to the rush of battle, this spell only lasts 12 rounds in combat. Marionette spells, anybody? Yeah, I mean, it does have the disadvantage of them being in your mind. Of lit of literally switching minds. But I could see this I could see this creating some interest some interesting effect some interesting effects. Cause if you do if you do this with somebody who's a different type of spellcaster if or or just a different um archetype, could you use their actions? Well it did say you you don't know their specific um, movements and movements and actions. Yeah, yeah I, see, I see that. Yeah, now. you only know their general. Mm -hmm. So, if they're a spellcaster, you don't know how to cast their spells because you've never studied how to cast their spells. What about if they're a field knight? Well, then I, I, have, I assume you can perform their general actions, like stabbing people to death. Mm -hmm. Not so sure you can perform any of their rocket power actions. I think this is this is more a way to make it so that an adversary is less effective on the field. You yeah. could very easily make it so that you're you, you you just passively make them take no turns. And then when the rounds end you go back to your body they come back to theirs, and they're all beat the hell out of. Mm -hmm. I think it's safe. I think it's safe to say we understand why Trevor was excited to have us have us cover this one. I went. We went into this thinking that we were going to be getting the spy, and we were sort of right. I mean, swap mines outright is the spy at that point. That's your disguise skill. I mean, the mask could also technically be a disguise skill, but that's just switching to a specific class. There's a lot of things. I um, I don't know if I'd go with the Chrono Dreamer or or the the uh, our masky uh, imitator. Imitator is what I'm go is what I'm going with if I'm doing mimic. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so sure about the Delusionist. The spells are really cool. Um, but the few unique spells you get, in my mind, aren't really enough for me, personally, to I, choose to special, specialize feel, Delusionist. I feel like the, I feel like the Delusionist is, um, a Mimic Delusionist is still, is still going to be pretty decent, but I do, th but given the few amount of, of, um, exclusive spells, I feel like the Delusionist is much better served with other casting types. Yeah, you pick some spells from the Reflection Tree to use along with everything else. Mm -hmm. because, especially, especially given the given the fact that there's some there's some there are some ridiculous spells. Um, it's safe to say that th that even though even though the mimic is a is meant to be a counter puncher, it's not like they're going to be passive in that regard. Oh no, they're going to still be using, you know, a lot of their normal stuff too. Mm -hmm. It's just then they also have additionals that allow them to use their not so normal stuff. Yeah. Now, I've told I've told you before, I am I am very bad with ca with counter puncher characters in fighting games. Yeah, we did talk about how how you're you're not so good at that. Oh. Uh, it's mostly because I'd ra I'd rather I'm I'd I'm not I'm not big on the whole waiting for stuff to happen. It's the reason why I don't play many tower defense games. Yeah, no, I understand that. I think the closest I came to playing a tower defense game is playing wave-based survival modes and shooters. 
Which are still more active than most tower defense games. Yeah. And I can understand engaging with a, with a tower defense game passively, but that's not how I work. Yeah. This I'd say I wouldn't ha I wouldn't have that kind of problem in this case, especially given subclasses like the imitator. <laughs> There's... The Imitator, which allows you to play around being other classes while being an, a Mimic at the same time. The Imitator Mimic is the is um is for those is for those who do not get enough multiclassing in a game that's already pretty generous with multiclassing. Yeah. Uh so we we may not have gone into super detail about it, but multiclassing is as easy as swapping out at levels what what bonuses you want to get that aren't exclusive mm -hmm. it's that easy and then you can use expertises to get things you know like proficiencies or other sorts of skills that you normally wouldn't get in your class either um we've also shown that you can pr you can pull spells from multiple casting trees so long as they're not exclusive spells mm -hmm. um so multi-classing in this game is less a matter of, well, I need to level up in this class and this other class, and it's more a matter of, I'm leveling up in my class. I don't really like the class skills. I'm, one of the class skills I'm getting this this level, I want to swap it with that class skill. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's modular, and it's really easy to understand as something modular. Oh, yes. And as an, as an aside... If if anybody was really annoyed by all the purple jokes, they use the color they use the color violet to re to represent the realm of reflection. I don't give a fuck if you were if you were overwhelmed by the purple jokes. They were funny. Eat shit. Mm -hmm. as, an <laughs> as an aside, I, I um the other maybe. This is, this is not the first time this, is, this has been brought up in my mind, but the other um, archetype that I keep thinking of is the Mesmer in both Guild Wars games. I can see it, sort of. It is a bit of a stretch because the Mesmer was, ver was very much a debuffer. And... Well, I mean, you've got plenty of CC in this class, too, so... Oh, yeah, you do. You do. Just not as... Just the Mesmer doubled down on that. Yeah. Yeah. But no, like I said, I can see it, sort of. Mm -hmm. Clearly, there's a limit. Yeah. But Which is ironic, considering I'm guessing the Realm of Reflections is not clear at all. And that, my personal imagination of the Realm of Reflection is an endless funhouse of distorted mirrors. Mm -hmm. And that sounds like hell. I would try and punch Every goddamn mirror. I break one, and now there's ten. <laughs> yeah. And for whatever reason, I keep for whatever reason I keep thinking of um, Mirror World from Common Rider Ryuki. Oh God. Just with, well, a better protagonist. <laughs> yeah, less sucking. <sighs> Attention, attention, um, attention, attention, writers for any Japanese product. Please do not name your main character Shinji or Hojo. It always leads to bad things. I don't know. Emu Hojo got, had good things happen for him. Exception. Yes, exception that proves the rule. True. And. Really, the really the ho the Hojo thing isn't as much of an offender as the Shinji thing. But next week we are continuing uh, we are continuing our um spell ca our spell casting run through because next week we've got the Naturalist. Goddamn hippie! The only spellcaster with a tree that is exclusive to the class. Mm -hmm. A tree, not spells. The entire spellcasting tree of Natra is locked to the naturalist. <sighs> the hippies really don't want to give up their land. Yeah, it also means that next week will be themed around 
The Mystery of the Druids. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> <sighs> you know, I'm going to have to bring a six foot tall, four armed, blue skinned man with four axes to this <laughs> shindig. Yes, because as we've established, elves live in trees. Fuck the elves, it's just too many trees for y'all, and you're reminding me of elves. <laughs> but that is a story for another night. So, with the, with all that with all that said, there should we will certainly be having a few surprises, and I'm certainly going to be a very busy monk this weekend. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers, present and not present. My name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>